So uh, we'll get started here right now. So uh, for media, if you guys could just uh, use the raise hand function for questions, uh, otherwise stay muted. And if you need it, the raise hand function, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, down in the bottom right in the reactions, there's a button in there that says raise hand. So uh, uh, we'll get started. Graham, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, thanks all of you for being here. Uh, I had a question for Heather about defense. Um, just curious, we've seen softball evolve so much in the last 10, 15 years in offense and pitching. In defense, how much has it changed for you as far as how you evaluate it, how you teach it, mm. how you feel about it? I, I think for us, defense has always been our foundation and our personnel that we have has allowed us to have it be our foundation, whether that be our pitching allows our defense to know where to be when they need to be there. Um, and then from Jen Salling to Ali Aguilar to Sis Bates now, like just the heritage of those short stops ultimately has really been something that we've been able to build our foundation around. Um, and then of course, you know, uh, like your battery, if your battery can be something that you can rely on um, pitcher and catcher, everything else kind of works seamlessly. But um, I think probably a lot of our philosophy founded in defense. I mean, JT runs the defense, specifically the infield. And so a lot of it's his baby. Um, but philosophically, like literally taking care of the ball and the timing of how you approach the ball and like synergistically how that all works together as a unit. A lot of it probably comes from watching a lot of just a lot of the game, um, like whether it be like the Latin influence in baseball or for softball, like the Japanese national team and those experiences that we've had to watch those teams um, and how they take care of the ball really is what uh, founds our defense and probably has been the biggest evolution in how we philosophize about defense is probably from the Japanese team. Thank you. Uh, Mike Farrell, go ahead. Yeah, this is also for Heather. I'm curious, you know, this is a team that's obviously very mature and has been on a lot of big stages. And this is another big one. You've got the ABC game this weekend and super regionals and all that kind of stuff. Do you address with the team, you know, being on this kind of stage with this kind of opportunity or, or is it just a, an old enough group where you don't really have to do that? I think we'll talk about it. Um, I haven't been with the team yet. The team practiced last night and I was still in, in Washington. So we'll talk a little bit about the opportunity and how, um, great it is for softball for us um, and that they are the team to be able to be on this stage and like you said they have the experience of you know playing in that 2018 national championship series they have those experiences of being at the world series um, and you know like the camera to us it, it's cool we like it um, but I think for the most part it's it's just more we want to honor the game and play the right way so the game can continue to grow. Um, so it's not necessarily about us, but it's about just perpetuating the greatness of the game. Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Morgan. Uh, so you catching Gabby like all weekend last week. Um, I mean, how is she holding up? I mean, that was a lot of innings for both of you, uh, you know, squatting and her pitching. Uh, I mean, how are you guys resting up and preparing just kind of for another you know, weekend? Yeah, I think we're, I mean, we're doing pretty well. Um, I think those double headers during pack definitely prepared us for that weekend and those long games. Um, but I think our adrenaline too just like fired us up that whole time. So yeah, we're doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, Mike Brown, go ahead. Uh, Heather, I was reading on the Oklahoma Sooners website, they're gonna allow fans in and there should be a sellout crowd. Uh, for every game and you haven't played in front of many fans this year is that something you're going to have to make any kind of an adjustment to I think that our team needs to know that it will not be like it was last week however last week was probably pretty equal in terms of energy from Michigan side to our side and you know just in terms of the player guest numbers it will not be the same environment it will be definitely not pro uh, pro University of Washington, but for us, I think these guys deserve to play in front of people and um, what an opportunity for us to be able to play in front of a crowd for once this year. How cool. Uh, Mike Farrell, go ahead. 
Yeah, this is for both Heather and, and Morgan. I'm wondering, you know, a lot has been talked about Gabby, obviously, but, you know, just her ability to overcome difficult batters or difficult innings. Um, not all pitchers can do that. I'm wondering what is it about her temperament or her demeanor from what you guys have seen that allows her to put a bad inning or a bad batter behind her? And obviously she's probably going to have more adversity coming up. I'll, I'll answer first. Um, I think the biggest thing about a pitcher like Gabby is that they believe in their stuff and they know that their stuff can get the outs. And no matter how dire the situation might be, like you saw Gab's have, you know, throwing back-to-back -back games on Sunday night, like no matter how dire the situation is, if you really like knuckle up and focus, you can always win as a pitcher. And I think Gabby had the first time I've really seen her have to dig into the extra gear was this past weekend. And it was, I hate to compare her to Danielle, but sometimes with Danielle, she would get to those points, Danielle Laurie, and you'd, you'd be like, uh Oh, like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden it'd be like, it's, di it's different. It's a different person. So it, it was really neat to be able to see her be able to do that. Cause she really hasn't had to carry it, our teams. She's always had Taryn Alvello and last year she, you know, she was the leader, but we didn't get that far enough to, to get to those points. So um, I'll let Morgan answer. She works way more together with her. Oh, it's on. yeah. Um, I would just say her ability to keep calm in like any situation, no matter what the score is, no matter who's on base, like you, you literally can't tell like with Gabby, like she's so present on every single pitch. Um, and I think that's super cool. Like she doesn't let the momentum of the game get to her. Um, so that's how I think Gabby is just so successful. Like Coach Har said, she's so confident in her stuff and she is so calm in any situation, so. Okay, uh, Graham, go ahead. Thanks. If I could actually ask a JT a question, just kind of following up on what I was asking Heather about defense and she was kind of talking about the philosophical side of stuff and what, what you guys do there. On, on the data side for you with the infield especially, how much are you using kind of the, the spray charts and just all the, all the massive data that is available now that maybe wasn't 10, 15 years ago? From a scouting standpoint of the opponent or for us internally? Both. Both. Well, we certainly are aware of, you know, its importance. Um, obviously, the pitcher we have in the circle is going to dictate what we're going to do against some of their hitters. Um, but as far as there's a basic statistic we use, and it's called a frame percentage. Is it in the throwing, the receiving frame of the receiver? And we don't pound it and you got to be careful on what the players actually want and need. Um, but we're aware of it and we use it and we play silly games in practice that try and, you know, enhance our ability to play really high level catch. That's what good defense is. And then I think the second piece of, um, you know, the data question is the cognitive overload that you can put an 18 to 22 year old in real fast. Um, you know, I was never a math guy anyway, but I'm aware of their importance, but we're still, we're still some years away in terms of the, the video technology and the tracking technology, I think that gets a, a big splash on the baseball side of things with MLB. Um, we're not there yet in softball, but we're, we're kind of in the infancy. And I think there's some companies out there that are doing a really good job. Um, and we take advantage of all of them. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Kaya, you've been on the team for a while now and had the chance to, you know, kind of play in the postseason many times. Like, um, you know, how much is like adversity like you had against uh, Michigan kind of important to, you know, maybe building confidence or, you know, just specifically the inning you had against Michigan where you have seven runs. Um, like, was that key kind of you think for motivation? Maybe you've learned from years past? Yeah, um, I think that was definitely motivating for our team and building confidence for us. But I think... Early on in that tournament, in that series, we, we played Michigan and we lost that game, but it was a really big growth moment. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities in postseason where we get to grow and become an even better version of our team. And so like that game and the games following were just extra opportunities to continue getting better. And that's just what's really important in postseason is just every opportunity you have to get better and become the best that we can be. 
Uh, Mike Brown, go ahead. Uh, Mike, you're on mute still. Sorry about that. Uh, back to JT again. Uh, have you had a look at their field, the OU softball complex? And if not, what do you know about it? Remember the uh, Huskies were there 20 years ago for a regional. <laughs> I haven't thought about that field much since. But what, what do you know about the infield dirt and what, what are you going to be dealing with? Uh, I was there actually uh, the sub in June of 2019. They hosted a uh, recruiting scouting event for the club scene. And so actually here, whatever that is, two years ago, um, I'm very familiar with it. Um, it's going to be a packed house. There's a little yellow ball. Um, the dirt's going to be red. The grass is going to be green, probably painted with a big old OU logo in the middle. And um, we're looking forward to getting out there. Uh, Mike Farrell, go ahead. Yeah, for, for Morgan and Kaya, I'm wondering just, you know, when this is sort of your last run here, do you think about that? Um, do you let yourself absorb that at all? Or do you kind of treat these games just like they're games? Um, I'll, I'll start this one off. Um, I, I don't think that I've even really thought about it being our last games at all. I haven't even processed really that we played our last game at Husky Stadium. I think really like we're really thinking about um, winning the last pitch played in Oklahoma City and that's all that's on our mind and I mean eventually I'll probably process it and it's going to be sad and like also happy at the same time but um, yeah I think for me at least I just have one thing on my mind. Yeah I'm the same exact way like I didn't even really process that it was our last game at Husky Stadium but like it's because I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm just thinking about like winning the next pitch and trying to enjoy every single moment with my teammates. So, uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, Coach Tar. Um, I, I kind of forgot to ask this after the last game too. Um, but you always talk about you know like hits will come when they come because like the game knows or whatever. Uh, but uh, like you know carrying over like success you had in, from last time to this weekend. I mean. Is there something you can do to kind of like, you know, motivate your team to, to, you know, carry that success over? Yeah, I think just the motivation is that the resilience that this team can show and has shown is really the opportunity that we have this weekend is like, we can't take pitches off. We, we have no, we have nothing to lose and everything to gain by going for it and having the bravery to put ourselves in places that we have been, but we haven't really shown to do and it's it's going to be one of those kind of battles where we know that we're going to score we're going to score the runs that we need to score and it's going to be offensive and it's not going to be something where we're going to score one run and, and win a game uh mike Varel, go ahead yeah uh heather just on that same note um this offense for Oklahoma seems pretty unprecedented, even statistically. Uh, where do they kind of rank, I guess, for you in terms of offenses that you've seen? And, and what do you guys need to do just to be able to keep them in the ballpark? Um, pitch good. Play good defense. And the rest will take care of itself. Um, it, it's, I mean, the, the offensive numbers are are unheard of. The averages and the power are, are ridiculous. So, there's obviously a fire under that team and they're all about it. And how cool is that for our game to know that the, it, the, the tapping out of what people can do wasn't at Lauren Chamberlain or it wasn't at Laura Espinosa back in 1994. It was, it's still yet to be defined there, but um, you still got to play defense. You still got to pitch and um, you know, let it take care of itself that way. Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, someone already touched on the question, just the fact that there's so much exposure for this weekend on ABC. But um, if like someone was to ask you um, like what this kind of means for the game of softball, um, I mean, I'm sure they'll be asked that maybe on TV. But I mean, what do you think this kind of opportunity or platform presents? I think it's pretty epic and deserved and 
unfortunately, Oklahoma and Washington will not be at the College World Series. You know, that's kind of a travesty, but if there's a silver lining in it, these two teams and these two women and these two programs get that opportunity to be the first to go through that. And I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I'm proud our team, including Morgan and Kaya and our group gets to be shown on, on that stage. Uh, Mike Farrell, go ahead. Yeah, for, for Morgan and Kaya, I'm, I'm wondering, um, you know, there probably haven't been too many games in the recent past where you guys have sort of been an underdog or haven't been the favorites going into it. Do you, in, do you enjoy this role of kind of having the, you know, the script flipped a little, little bit? Do you enjoy the underdog role? Um, yeah, I just think it's such a great opportunity for us, like Kaya said, to grow as a team. I think the more competitive it gets, like the better we play. So I'm just, I think in those moments, like those are my favorite moments when we play like the Oklahomas or the Michigans, like there's no other moment like that. And um, I feel like it really brings us together for like one common goal. So um, I'm just super, super excited to be able to compete and uh, play them, so. Yeah, I think Morgan really said it all, but um, I mean, iron sharpens iron and that's two really competitive teams and uh, I'm just really excited for this group to continue growing this weekend to get to where we want to go. Uh, Eric, go ahead. For Coach Tarr, obviously this is two staffs that have won a national championship. What is it about Coach Gasso and her staff that you admire from seeing her competing against her uh, that it stands out? I think two things. Um, one is the consistency over time. And two is uh, I don't I don't think they they really rest on their past successes. Like they they're always evolving and trying to do things different. Perfect. Uh, we'll wrap that up right there. Um, this will be uploaded and I'll, I'll email out a link to it if anybody wants the recording for quotes and such. But uh, thanks to everyone on this. Um, Morgan, Kaya, Coach Tar, uh, Coach, yeah. <laughs> Coach D'Amico. Sorry, JT. <laughs> uh, thanks so much. Thanks. You